FZ10, also known as MT10 over in Europe. It's a really amazing bike, amazing looking bike, and I mean a little controversial, I guess. I think the front end reminds most people of bugs and maybe a praying mantis or something like that. But man, what a beautiful, beautiful thing. 1000 cc engine straight up from the R1, the new R1. Uh, it is detuned or retuned for that matter. Oof. For city driving, riding, whatever excuse they come up with. Tank is really wide. I'll talk more, more about the ergonomics once we get going. But hopefully today's ride is a lot more exciting than yesterday's. Uh, when I was riding yesterday, we hit some traffic and the lead rider wasn't giving us any room to accelerate, so I didn't even bother recording that. Um, it, it feels pretty comfortable in the seat already, just, just getting on like this. And I, and I love the huge style, big gear indicator, mirrors. Uh, uh, pretty pretty useless. I'd rather get some more squarish ones or more round ones. Uh, the position is slightly forward and from what I remember yesterday this compared to real naked bikes that don't even have this little skirt fairing it is it is much better. I wasn't feeling like my helmet was gonna get pulled off like I did when I was riding the SV650 over there from Suzuki. I wonder why they let that guy first. One of the best things about this bike, I think, is how smooth the throttle is. I actually heard from a friend that test rode the R1S that they also have on the line that I'll try to get on later, uh, that that bike was really twitchy, but this one is perfect for your daily riding. I don't, I don't feel any twitchiness at all. The brakes, though, are super touchy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the seat is perfect to hold your ass back when you give a gas because you're really gonna need it. This thing is fast. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna try to quick shift it too to see how it reacts later. I'll let you guys know what it feels like. But just going down at 50 some miles an hour. There's no bad wind buffeting on my helmet at all, and I don't feel like my head is getting pushed back. But this sound you can't beat. My god. <laughs> I would have this over a four cylinder any day. First gear is really long and confusing. I, I keep trying to downshift, thinking I'm in second. I think it goes without saying that the suspension on this thing is great. Compared to the FZ09, you really know you're getting a good bang for the buck in the upgrade because it is so stable on the turns. There's no pogo stick feeling. I think we're gonna go over some bumps here, I'll tell you how it feels over turn. Yeah, no problem at all. So if you just get off the seat while you're going over those bumps, bike behaves just as you want it to. You can even quick shift this on downshift, my god. The only thing I don't like about bikes on demo rides is they seem to make the clutch engage all the way at the top. And if you have, if you're a smaller dude and your fingers are not that long, <laughs> it makes it really difficult to play with that sweet spot at the top to take off from first gear because you'll start giving a gas and you'll go nowhere. It is a tall bike though. It's definitely taller than the other bikes I've ridden. I'm only 5'6 and I'm on tippy toes. But it's not like it's something that bothers me. Oh 
Oh my god. Oh, the front end comes so light. This is great. Oh, what a rush. I don't think any other bike has ever given me this rush of acceleration. And I don't think I don't think I can give it full throttle on lower gears without the wheel coming up, so I'm probably not going to get to experience that on the test rides because I don't want them to take my cue away. They specifically tell you that if you lift wheel, they can they can shut you down. So let's not do that. Let's go back to the suspension. It's a gigantic improvement over the FZ9. Very solid. It is a little bit stiffer, but I'm sure you can set the shocks to be smoother if you don't do a lot of mountain riding and you're going to use this as a daily. I think it's per perfectly fine for a daily ride. I don't know what kind of gas mileage it gets. I don't think you should even care about it <laughs> if you're getting a 1000cc engine. It's probably not that bad anyway. Tell you one thing though, the this bike versus the Suzuki GSX 1000, GSX S 1000, yeah. Uh, the tank is not as comfortable to grip. Although maybe I'm not putting my crotch close enough to the tank, but uh, there seems to be some geometry that's hurting my knees if I grip the tank real tight. Um, probably just comes down to getting used to the position. Oh man, it takes these turns like nothing. These guys are going way too slow. 56 miles an hour. Way too slow for this bike. It can definitely take that at at least 20 to 30 more miles an hour. Uh, I think if I had just one complaint about this bike, it's just how how little progression there is on the brakes. But I guess you got to have that for track performance. But just a little bit of travel in the very beginning makes a huge difference in the amount of braking you get. And it probably smooths out the faster you go. Oh, it is so balanced. These turns are nothing. I wish these guys picked up speed like the Suzuki demo rides where you can really go super fast on these turns. Oh, that is so enjoyable. And every once in a while, even from the stock exhaust, you get these little pops. I'm sure that wouldn't convince anybody to keep the stock pipe on this bike. <laughs> but just in case there's somebody watching that's a purist and doesn't like modifying their bikes, out of the box, I think it sounds as loud as you need it to be to give you enough feedback for shifting. And it keeps you entertained with the little mild pops you get now and then. God, it is so quick. And yeah, you can quick shift it, no problem. Up and down. As long as you do the proper input. Because I don't think... I mean, it might have a quick shifter up. But usually, they've been getting pretty stingy with the features that the U.S. gets on these bikes and giving you at most a up quick shift, not a down. Alright, let's try to engage cruise control. Nope, that didn't work. Maybe there's a button that you gotta press. Nope, that didn't work. Maybe you have to be above a certain speed? If you hold it... Nope. We're probably going too slow anyway. Ah, oh, the pops. 
Like I was saying about the downsides and I had just come up with one with the brakes, I would rather switch it actually because you're going to get used to the brake pressure pretty easy. I'll switch it for how tough the seat is. It feels thin. I think you'll have to upgrade the, the seat if you're going to do any kind of long distance riding on this one. But what a wonderful bike. I'd give it a 9 out of 10 if I was going to grade it. <laughs>